we are looking into valley number one. And you can see the trees going back toward the plateau. That's the valley. There is some water in the valley. It's a cul-de-sac valley, so the plateau, the first line of bluffs, are all around. As you can tell, there's the plateau. And then you got valley one in the middle. And as you sweep around, it's nothing but plateau as far as the eye can see. It's a really broad, long plateau. And in front of the plateau, you can see the cottonwood trees. This is Reno Creek in front. And basically Custer and Reno were moving along the trees down here. And Benteen is going to appear up on the plateau here in a few minutes. Now as Benteen is leaving the divide and moving up to the plateau after 12.15 p.m., Custer decides to send the captain some supplementary orders, and he does dispatch a courier to him who catches the battalion before they get to the plateau. Uh, Custer wants Benteen to create an advance detail, basically to protect his battalion. They don't want the battalion to run across an ambush or anything like that. So Custer wants Benteen to, to basically pick one officer and a little detachment of five or six men and put them well out in advance of his battalion just so they could ascertain that the area is safe and they can negotiate the train and find the best route for the battalion. So Benteen picks his own executive officer from Company H, First Lieutenant Francis Marion Gibson, and five or six men from his own Company H. And he makes them the advance detail and he moves them out in front. Now Gibson and the detail arrives at the plateau first and Benteen with the three three companies in the battalion arrive a little bit later. Once Benteen gets up on this spot, he looks down valley number one, looks to his right toward us to ascertain what the situation is there. And he doesn't see any Indian villages, so he knows that Custer's left flank is clear. Remember, Custer and Reno are coming down the tree line here, so their left flank is going to be wide open to this valley if there's Indians in it. But there are no Indians, there is no village. So Benteen knows that the flank is clear. Benteen, while looking down here, also sees Custer's troops. Uh, they notice the gray horses of Company E. They really stick out when it comes to the, the terrain back here. All the other horses were either black or brown or light tan sorrels, so the grays really stuck out. They were really distinctive. So Benteen has accomplished the first part of his mission. He knows that Custer's flank is clear. Now he looks to the west because he needs to look into the Little Bighorn Valley and ascertain what the situation is there. He needs to see if there's any Indians, any villages, any signs of movement or scattering or anything like that. Unfortunately, the plateau, even though it's broad and flat, it's not really high. So when he looks to the west, he runs into Ridge B, which is that high ridge on the, the horizon here. It's the second line of bluffs. It is higher than the plateau, so we, Benteen cannot see into the valley of the Little Bighorn to ascertain what the situation is. So the scout is not over yet. Benteen realizes that he's going to have to go up to that ridge. So he sends the advance detail under First Lieutenant Francis Marion Gibson ahead, and he's getting ready to move out the battalion when he finds some company. Uh, Custer has dispatched an orderly to Benteen, and it's in the form of Chief Trumpeter Henry Voss of the headquarters staff. Voss arrives up on the plateau and basically tells Benteen if he doesn't see anything from the plateau that he's to go to the next line of bluffs. And this is what Benteen was already doing. So Benteen realizes Custer is just being thorough. Now Custer, when he went down Reno Creek earlier, he, like Benteen, realized that it wasn't a ridge line, but it was a plateau, and he quickly ascertained that Benteen would not be able to see the Little Bighorn from the plateau, so that's why Voss was sent with supplementary orders for Benteen to move to the next line of bluffs. So Voss came back down here to join Custer, and Benteen begins to move off, and they begin to move down this long plateau here toward the next line of bluffs. Well, Benteen doesn't get very far when he is surprised to find another courier from Custer coming in. And this courier is in the form of Sergeant Major William Henry Shero of the headquarters staff. And Shero's supplementary orders to Benteen basically say, if you do not see anything from the second line of bluffs, make sure you go to the next line of bluffs. 
So Benteen receives the order and Sergeant Major Shero comes back down here to join Reno and Custer. Now Benteen is getting a little annoyed now because he feels like he's being micromanaged. He has the supplementary orders that have come in have now hemmed him in and he has no discretion at all. Basically he has to keep going every, over every ridge until he can look into the Little Bighorn Valley and he could end up tiring his horses out really bad and demoralizing the men if it's just if they feel it's pointless. So Benteen's a little annoyed at this point, but he does have to carry out the mission, so he continues down the plateau and we will stop for now and get to the next part of the Benteen Scout. <laughs>